Uh, this is Jeff, W6FCC. It's uh, August 1st, 2018. I thought I'd walk through installing the RSBA1 absolutely from scratch. And uh, in this case, I've put the CD ROM from the original distribution in the CD drive, and you can see here that it's uh, the ICOM device. And you have a few of these to, uh, files and subdirectories in here. It has a uh, driver subdirectory and it's reading it now and it, of course it has the RSBA1 directory. Well what I did is instead of using the CD I copied these two directories out of here and I put them into a directory on my local disk and I put the uh, new USB driver which I didn't use the old one I got this from ICOM and this is the files that were on that uh, the CD and then these are the files for the update. Now the updated files are easy enough to find. Uh, what you do here is you go over here to uh, ICOM and you you look up their firmware updates and I think this was the uh, was this what I used to find it? Let me check here. I think I typed in uh, RSBA1 PDF and then I uh, went to the one where it had the downloads. So depending on the radio that you have you can go ahead and grab the appropriate firmware and this is the version that you want. So you get those and I put uh, those files, put those in the update. So this is where I put the update software that I got from ICOM. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and install the USB driver. Now if you're only a client machine you don't need this. But I'm going to put it in anyway and I'm running Windows 7. So you would go ahead and install this driver. So let me do that right now and I want to have the uh, I'm not showing the extensions which I should. Let me pause this for a second while I set up to show file extensions. Okay well if you're not showing file extensions it's probably a good idea to show you how to do that. In the Windows 7 I have this Organize menu. So you pull down that and you look here for the folder and search options. And what do I want to view? Well, I want to show uh, a bunch of things here. Let's see, show the full... I, I sometimes do this, it's not critical. I don't show hidden files. I don't want to hide extensions for known file types. I want to leave those so I can see them. And go ahead and apply this close that and now I have the names of the files with their extensions so let me put in the installer for let me see what version of of uh, Windows am I running here so you right click and you can look at the properties of it and it says that I'm running a 64-bit operating system so I go ahead and put that away and I'm going to install the one for the 64 and there's the Silicon Labs driver which you need and uh, that is done with the driver. That device that I just installed even though it said that it installed the correct device driver it won't show up until you connect the radio. Then you go ahead and you put in the uh, you go to the next one which is the original disk files and you go ahead and you put in you type setup and if I want to allow this say yes I want the English version and it's preparing to install and I say go ahead and do that yes I accept the license agreement and for my username I'm going to put in W6FCC and this will show up when you go ahead and connect to your system if you connect to it from the outside and I'm just going to put in uh, company I don't know don't need one ham radio I say next and now it's asking me for the product ID and the license key so I'm going to pause this while I type in the two numbers that I got off the disk okay so I've uh, gone ahead and typed in those numbers and it's now asking me uh, what do I want to do next and uh, this is a fine location it's going to put it into this subdirectory so I say next 
and setup will install here blah 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 you say next and it's now adding the files and it says uh, always trust software from ICOM so I'll say go ahead and uh, allow that these drivers are for the audio the driver and this is also for their virtual serial port these drivers are different than the USB to serial drivers that you need if you're setting up a server. Okay, so this one's done. Now what I want to do is to go ahead and install the update. So I just put the files in here for the update. You get a couple of other things which don't have to pay attention to. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and I'm going to run this one as an administrator. And it says yes I want to allow this. So it, it installs the update. And now it's working on uh, version 1.93 is being upgraded to version 1.96. So those are the three basic steps. You install the uh, create a, the Silicon Labs driver if you're going to run it as a server machine. Don't need that if you're only setting up a client. But it doesn't hurt to install it. There's nothing wrong with having that driver there. And now I've been upgraded to version 1.95 so I say finish. And what I end up on my desktop is I have this program and I have this program and they're both sitting on the desktop. So that's pretty much it for uh, installing the program. Now when I run the ICOM remote utility for the first time I think it's going to ask me a question here and I'm going to pause this to make sure it doesn't display the user ID, uh, the disk ID. Okay when I ran it it did display the the two numbers the product key and the license key so I'm going to pick up where this leaves off set your own PC information. What this does is when you are attached to someone else's server, if you have the luxury of having a friend that will let you use their their uh, ICOM radios from your site, it's going to uh, display this information on the remote's PC. So I don't uh, want to say it when, oh I don't want this. This is uh, Jeff, this is W6FCC um, this would be, I guess I'd be a uh, client. That's what this one is. And I don't use this. I have a cable. Uh, ADSL, asynchronous DSL, or cable TV line. That's what we have. And so we say, go ahead and register this PC with all this information. The changes will be in effect after the application restarts. So you hit OK. And I guess we're done here. And I'm going to pause it for a second while I rerun the ICOM remote. Now here's one of the things you're going to see right away. Windows Security Alert. It says the firewall has blocked this program. Well, you're going to have to allow access for a couple of different things. So you can go ahead and allow this one. <clears throat> but uh, you're going to want to allow more than just this. So instead of doing it this way, I'm going to, uh, well, I'll go ahead and let this one through. And it starts off with this menu as to how you want to operate this machine. I don't use this menu, the setup uh, wizard, but there is another file out there, a YouTube file, that explains what to do from here. So we don't need to go any more in this particular video. You're pretty well set up. So go see the other videos that I have under W6FCC on YouTube and you can see what to do to set up a client and a server computer for RSBA1. So that's it, W6FCC. It's now uh, August 1st, 2018 and uh, this is how you initially set up your RSBA1 program.